CHH's biggest mistake slash myth. Let's talk about it. What's going on? My name is Ruslan, hip hop artist, creative entrepreneur with King's Dream. ENT.com and this channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire people to live out God's dream for their life. New rule alert on this channel. I repeat, new rule alert on this channel. I'm doing this new series on CHH as a way to have a conversation with you guys in the comments section. Some of y'all aren't even watching the entire videos. Some of y'all ain't even watching half the videos. You're just going straight to comment to be heard. This channel is not for you, okay? This channel is not for you. If that's what you want to do, you want to just be heard, stop it. New rule alert. Try and watch at least the majority of the video before you go down and start commenting and pushing back weirdo agendas and venting and just trying to be heard. That's not what the comment section is for. And you guys know that I be in that comment section like a daggone hawk. I see the comment section like, like my walls in my house. I want it to be a pleasant experience for me. And I want it to be a pleasant experience for all the new subscribers that we get and people that come alongside of this community. Speaking of community, got to send a big shout out to all my people on Patreon who Give to our monthly subscription service through Patreon to support what we're doing here at King's Dream Entertainment. We appreciate you guys. There's exclusive content on Patreon. Like recently, I just did an entire Bible study about cussing and in the Bible. Is it a sin? All that kind of stuff. That's in the description below if you want to watch. That's really good. Gospel Center. I think you guys would appreciate it. And I think you might be surprised by my position on some of this stuff. But let's get into this. Like I told you guys, I am a... I am a hawk in the comments section, and this has been an issue I've always had with the CHH community. If you don't know what CHH is, CHH is Christian Hip Hop. There is a community. Some people call it a subgenre. It doesn't really matter how you define it to me. At the end of the day, Loom Hip Hop called me one of the new OGs of this community, the new OGs of Christian rap, and I want to use my platform to have meaningful conversations and drive this community in a place where I think it's going to become more healthy, uh, more loving, more gracious. You know, all those values that Jesus wants us to represent, that's the point of these videos. That's what we've been talking about. So the past couple of videos, I did my love and hate relationship with CHH. I did part two of that, and I did C uh, cussing in CHH, and then I did CHH is not the church and I distinguished it and I said if somebody doesn't want to be a part of CHH it doesn't mean that they don't want to be a part of the church it doesn't mean that they're denouncing their faith it just means that they don't want to be a part of a market and a demographic of people that they feel disconnected with and somebody you know will push them back and CHH is the church and it's like ministry and this and that and so this led to a very interesting comment section and to a comment that I want to point out that as I reflect back of my time a part of this community you know I got saved whew, 2002 2003 discovered this Christian hip hop community through Sphere of Hip Hop, shout out to them. They put out a playlist. I started following them. And then as I transitioned and started doing music, it just was kind of a natural fit. But then again, I never really fit in. So I have a very unique perspective. So the fact that they're even calling me one of the new OGs of CHH is hilarious to me. So let's get into this comment. And I want to I wanna talk about it. I want to unpack it. Listen and watch the entire video before you get triggered and hop in the comment section. But I think this is toxic and I think we need to just do away with this mentality. And I'm not going to put their name on there because I don't want to give them any clout, nor do I want them to report this as some type of bullying response video. That's not what it is. But check it out. All right. So this is in response to my CHH is not the church video, meaning that CHH is a community, it's a subgenre of music. It is not the same as the biblical bride of Jesus, the church, capital C church, or even a local church, local ecclesia. You can go back and watch that video if you want to. Okay, so this dude replied, CHH means, CHH is a parachurch. CHH is a parachurch. It means it's, a, it's here to assist the church, okay? The problem is we are not using scripture to direct the vision. Oof, we're not using scripture to direct the vision. The Bible states, go and make disciples, teaching them to obey and all that I've commanded you. We are not entertainers. We are interchangers. Ooh, nice little wordplay there. Repentance should be the heart of CHH. So he said, we're not entertainers, right? So I pushed back, of course, the way I should. 
And we had a dialogue going, and then he replied back again with this. Now, I highlighted the part I want you guys to pay attention to. He said, promoting the gospel should become natural in my workplace or at lunch. I was basically saying not everybody has to uh, declare the gospel in all areas of their life. That's not the point of what we're doing. You don't make disciples in every single context. I don't walk in the gym and try to disciple people. I don't walk into uh, the grocery store and try to disciple people. And so his response was, you know, we should make that uh, as a part of our entire life. He said, our professions are just to be, our profession are just to be connected to people so that they might hear the gospel. Let me spelled here. <laughs> yes, we are there to do a good job at our profession, but our purpose must be the gospel. The church disciples us and we disciples others through our profession. Okay, I have no problem with that. You know, if, if, if your profession, your job allows you to disciple people, that's cool. Okay, then he says, I was at the dry cleaners and they covered my clothes with plastic and the plastic said, Jesus is Lord. Chick-fil-A lets it be known their Christian stances and their sandwiches on their sandwiches, right? So I was like, okay. So his, the, the, the pushback is, look, even Chick-fil-A, my dry cleaners, everybody's witnessing. Why don't Christian rappers want to witness? And I said, well, first of all, nobody is attempting to not witness. We're saying the CHH is not a church. It's not the same as a church. So he keeps pushing back, keeps pushing back. Now, in the scriptures, there's a passage uh, where Paul, in, I think it's Second Thessalonians, talks about being a tent maker, meaning that he didn't want to be dependent on the church. So he actually had a side profession. And from that side profession, he built tents. And that is how he provided for himself so that the churches he wanted to go and visit. And you guys know, Saul was, you know, had a crazy encounter with Jesus. Jesus rescued him. He equipped him. And then Saul became tall, uh, Saul became Paul, went and preached the gospel to the known world, wrote a majority of the New Testament. Boom. So that's who Paul is. He wrote a majority of our New Testament Bible. And in it, he says, I don't want to be a dependent on churches. I don't want to be a financial burden on you guys. I'm going to be a tent maker. I'm going to work a job and I will fund my own way to do missions work, right? Which is which is actually kind of a, a, a wild concept if you think about it. And I said, yo, there are certain rappers who just want to make art and they want to make music and they're Christians. Why should they feel the pressure that you're presenting to them of being a parachurch ministry and it has to be exclusively to disciple people, right? And so we went back and forth on it. So I'm just giving you guys some context. Now let's go back. He says, I was at the dry cleaners. So now my pushback is, listen, if you go to Chick-fil-A, you don't walk into Chick-fil-A and they're preaching repentance and they're preaching hell to you and they're, right? You go to Chick-fil-A, they give you a fire sandwich. Boom, you eat the sandwich. It's good. And their customer service, the way they run their business, the way they treat their employees, the, everything else about Chick-fil-A is reflecting a Christ-centered, Jesus-centered worldview of that organization, even to how they do uh, their store ownership. It's a, actually a brilliant model. You should really look into it. And that is the, the, the parallel I'm using. It's like, yo, if a rapper... If any person wants to start a business, why does it have to be exclusively to disciple people? Why are we compartmentalizing? I'm going to answer that here. Back when CHH started, back when people were starting out, you used to have to really overcompensate the fact that you were a rapper and you were a Christian. This is what I mean. It wasn't really a thing like, like Christians were over there in that world and rappers were over there and they and rappers were bad guys and Christians were good guys. And so when Christians started getting saved and, and, and started doing, um, when Christians started getting, when rappers started getting saved or, or, or Christians became rappers, it was very taboo, it was very frowned upon. I'm talking like 80s, 90s, probably even early 2000s. And so what happened was you would have to go in and really be able to also preach and exemplify that you knew the word because these churches were so against hip-hop. They were so against a different art form that they didn't understand at the time. And so cats used to have to overcompensate. Who am I talking about? Specifically, I'm talking about guys like Tunnel Rats. I'm talking about guys like Future Shock, where I've personally heard stories from my OGs, Future Shock, about them getting kicked out of churches for being rappers. This was really happening. And it seemed like we made a lot of progress, and it was, and it, and it was really good for a while, about the mid-2000s when I came in. And you know what happened? We were getting embraced. Churches started booking us more. And I was like, yo, this is cool. And then G. Craig Lewis, weirdo, dropped his goofy The Truth About Hip Hop and pretty much said all of Christian hip hop and everybody doing or listening or affiliated with hip hop in any way is, is following a false religion. And so there was literally churches that said, yeah, like that had booked us before, brought us out, that were like, yeah, we can't do this anymore. 
And so the pendulum swung back the other extreme where Christian hip hop then became more and more overtly Christian, overtly theological, overtly ministry centered, which I don't have a problem with if people want to make exclusively ministry rap or worship rap. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm just giving you guys context of where it came from. It came from a lack of being accepted by the church. And so they had to go over the top with how explicitly Christian they were. You actually don't see this in any other business model out there. You don't see someone hopping on YouTube and then you're like, yo, how is your ministry going, brother? How is your ministry going? Like, it's just like, yo, you're doing YouTube page, dope. Yo, you're doing music, dope. Yo, you don't see this in country music. You don't say, oh, how is how's your, how's your ministry going, brother? How is your sermons going? How are you discipling people through your country music? How are you discipling people through your YouTube page? It's just like, yo, it's just, it's just an outlet. It's an expression. It's a platform. That's what music is. That's what entertainment is. Now, should we, should we be making disciples of Jesus? Of course, but our lives is our ministry, not compartmentalized to just rap and that's dangerous if you just see your music as your ministry what about the rest of your life my life is a ministry who i am when i walk into the gym every morning is a ministry who i am when i come home and the way i embrace my wife and my son is a ministry that's my first ministry my primary ministry matter of fact and rap is just an extension of the rest of my life music is just an extension of the rest of my life youtube is the extension of the rest of my life and i disciple people in my real life why put the pressure on someone to be a disciple maker through rap music that was never the intent and this this right here this next point i'm going to point out to you guys this passage right here he said christian rappers are really worship leaders bruh okay <laughs> christian rappers are really worship leaders and must have he says it must anytime, anytime somebody says must have and must have jobs and promote the gospel which pushes the process of discipleship his position is that rappers have to be exclusively about ministry exclusively about discipleship chh is still the body of christ which is the church the world hears us and they're saying church is coming some of these artists who claim christ will co-sign gangster rap and make it appear that christ is not preaching against sin or don't mention christ at all right now i'm not saying that that's that we should not mention christ that's not what i'm saying i'm saying there's there's a place and a time to disciple people and there's a time to have fun. And so the biggest mistake, the biggest mistake that CHH, in my opinion, has made is putting the yoke on minister and theologian on people who are just artists and creatives and entertainers. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with being an artist, creative, and entertainer. It's that hip hop has been so demonized that we have to swing the opposite uh, pendulum to be so exclusively... Um, ministerial and, and, and christian and churchy and theological and there's nothing wrong with that if that's your heart that's who you are but there was a point about 10 years ago where you had to fit into that bubble and you had to have the right theology and you had to have the right discipleship and be in the right church and it's like bro like people who love jesus want to make rap music to me they should be a part of the chh community not if they're ministers or not and speaking of worship music if you guys want to support some dope worship music yo support my man antoine bradford and montel fish they're doing a west coast cali tour shout out to them there's actual worship music out there that's really fire but to say that rappers are worship leaders bruh get out of here like no ministry is for your life not a compartmentalization of your life so this is the biggest letdown is that we've overlooked that hip-hop is a fun art expression it's it's to be enjoyed it's to be celebrated it's to dance it's to turn up to and there's a socially conscious and a spiritual element as well but if we look by and large it's, it's about having a good time and we've overlooked this by putting this yoke of being a minister and being a theologian and a worship leader on kids like what up rg and foggy raw and all these young guys that are coming up they're not they're not your pastor my man they're not your pastor they're not a theologian their music does not exist to disciple people into a relationship with jesus the local church's job is to disciple people into a relationship with Jesus. Our job as believers holistically. And I know that those guys are ministering in their personal lives and they're a part of churches and they have people that they're mentoring and all those kind of things. But this is, I think, a very, very toxic train of thought. I've seen it. I'm tired of it. We need to stop it. We need to stop holding Christian rappers to a standard that we don't hold Christian country singers to, Christian rock musicians to, Christian YouTubers to. And that's this false mentality and this 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 goofy myth that your Christian rap 
or your Christian rapping or your Christian hip hop career is your ministry. Your life is your ministry, fam. Go and minister and make disciples in your real life. If that bleeds over into your music, man, praise God. If, if it doesn't, cool. I have no problem with you writing songs about relationships or writing songs about love or writing songs about being young and struggling in college or so many things we could talk about. But this to me, this to me is the biggest thing that I see that's just put a lot of people in, in a very limited and very tied down mentality. And it's, I'm, I'm just sick of it, guys. Like we have to stop. So what I am not saying is that Christian rappers should never talk about their faith. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying every Christian should talk about their faith. But if you walk into Chick-fil-A, which is a Christian establishment, it's a Christian, it's owned by a Christian uh, business person, and most of the owner operators are Christians, you're not going to walk in and they're not going to be like, repent, turn, for the time is at hand, Jesus is coming, confess your sin. That's not what's going to happen at Chick-fil-A. That's not what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Amazing service, great food, a warm, welcoming environment. And I think if we're going to compare what Christian hip hop can be is more of an amazing environment, a Chick-fil-A. And then if people ask and if people are trying to figure out what's going on, why is this environment so different than McDonald's? Oh, oh, they're oh, they're Christian owned. Right. And, and we don't back down from the fact that we're Christian. We don't downplay the fact of our faith. We just we just we just aren't freaking weird and goofy about it like. I don't, I don't understand why this is such a disconnect. And so, again, I'm going to use my platform <laughs> to address these things because we got to steer this thing in a better direction. We got to stop trying to hold uh, young artists like John Keith and What Up RG and, 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 and Foggy Raw to a standard that you don't even hold yourself to in your real life. If we're going to be real. If you're discipling people, man, praise God. Majority of us. If you're going to be honest with yourself, are you mentoring somebody? Are you discipling somebody? Are you getting discipled? Focus on that before you hold Christian rappers and Christian hip-hop artists to a standard that, that is really a standard for people in ministry, and that's not how everybody sees it. You know what I'm saying? There's a time and a place for everything. There's a time to celebrate. There's a time to have fun. There's a time to turn up. There's a time to be deep. There's a time to be theological. I have a bias in that, yeah, I don't go to Christian hip-hop for my theology. You know who I go to for my theology? The Bible, my pastor, and some respected scholars and teachers. I don't go to Christian rappers. I go to Christian rappers when I want to hear rap from a Christian perspective. Maybe I'm over, maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but that's my perspective. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. Again, uh, no, no weirdo comments, please. I know you guys are like, what are you talking about? Let's keep it civil. Let's keep it polite. Want to hear from you guys in the comment section below. What do you guys think? Am I tripping? Am I crazy? Do we have to hold Christian rappers to a, 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 a crazy leadership standard or do we just say, hey, man, they're artists, they're creatives, hold them to the standard of any other person who's out here living their life. I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. Be civil, be nice, be courteous. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Peace.